What's up everyone? How's it going? My name is Daniel Francis. I'm the creator of the Master Your Stutter program where I help people overcome stuttering, speak with confidence through learning how to public speak. And in this video, I want to break down three tips to boost your confidence when speaking. This is probably one of the biggest questions uh, that I get, which is, how do I speak with confidence under pressure? How do I have that confident um, voice when um, I'm out um, socializing and I'm out for dinner, I'm out with friends and family or um, with colleagues? And you know, to me, communication is the crux to everything. If you don't have your communication on point, if you don't know how to um, really articulate your thoughts, you're gonna have a hard time getting promoted, uh, building that brand, um, getting that client. So. I really want to break these down. Uh, they're going to be very basic principles, uh, but I want to tie stories of uh, how um, it's worked for myself and how it can work for you. So, what is number one? Well, number one is uh, when people know me, they know me for being very enthusiastic. So, what is enthusiasm? Well, enthusiasm is basically having the excitement in your voice. That is um, being light but also having a lot of energy behind what you're saying. See, a lot of bad speakers, they're dull or they're monotone or they just talk at this level all day long and I'm trying to get my point. Um, or they're too high and, 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 and it just, it doesn't flow. So enthusiasm, remove the X, is basically having that, um, just excitement behind your voice. You know, one of the biggest things when I was knocking doors, um, what I had to realize was, when, I, when someone opened the door, they gave me max seven seconds. And I either caught their attention or they just slammed the door on my face. And what I realized is initially I, I was nervous and I was scared and I was worried about what they were gonna say and I brought that to the door. And usually the way my pitch would go, I'd be like, hello, how's it going? Uh, my name is Daniel and I'm with XYZ Company. And, and then within seconds they would just slam the door. Sorry, we're not, we're not interested. And then what I did was I said, okay, look, I'm not gonna quit on this thing. I need to bring that, I need to bring something to the door. I need to bring the party to the door. So what I would do is I would, um, I would, I would experiment like a scientist and I would try different things. I would try different scripts and different words and different words that I would use. And what I realized was whatever I said wasn't the most important, but really the tone and the energy that I brought to the door was actually um, the missing piece. So instead of, you know, I would say the exact same script, but with energy. So I would say, hey, how's it going? My name is Daniel, uh, just with this company, XYZ Company. And uh, the reason why we're actually in the area is because we've been upgrading all the fiber optic lines in the area. So what that means for you guys is faster internet, better picture on the TV, um, and a better home phone package. Now, quick question, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. And I would have that excitement uh, to my voice um, and they would see it in my eyes. And what the other person saw was someone who was actually engaged. They actually believed with what they said. So even when I'm breaking down this, I wanna have enthusiasm in my voice because if I don't, maybe you might not believe me. Maybe you might not believe that to be true. So in charisma, enthusiasm goes hand in hand. And if you wanna be a better salesperson, if you wanna be, if you wanna go I don't know, go, go on a date with a girl and have a great time. Enthusiasm is number one. Awesome, let's go to number two. Smile more. Body language as a whole is, I wanna say over 50% of your communication. 7% of communication are the words you say, 30-ish uh, percent is the tone of voice, and then about 50 plus percent is your body language. And what that means is me saying, I love you, compared to, I love you, is completely different. And it's the same words, but a completely different message, or I love you, or I love you. There, there are different tones to it. So when we break that down and we start to actually study that, a lot of the way people judge us based on communication is the tone of voice we have and our, and our, our body language. Now, smiling is, is why we smile, we have the biggest smile when a baby smiles, you know, or um, that trusting figure, or when someone says that person's very attractive, 
you know, on, on a TV show or in a movie, you'll find pictures of that person smiling on Google, right? The smile shows the audience that you're confident. Think of what, how does a depressed person look like if you had to label them or put them in a box, right? Um, shoulders down, right? Or slumped over, head down, right? Just talking like this, maybe not really making much eye contact, right? That's what um, a, you know, a sad or depressed person would look like, right? An angry person too, right? Confidence, a confident person, one of the biggest things is they know how to control their emotions, right? So they, so they keep themselves in check. So if you want to be confident while speaking, the first thing you should do, and even just socializing, is put a smile on your face. Smile, man. You feel good. You know, when I was knocking doors, when I would have a bad day, I would train myself. And what I would do is naturally, when I would have negative thoughts, I would snap in my ear and put a big smile on my face. When someone would reject me at the door, I would say, great, I can get angry, I can get upset, I can find all the reasons why it's not working, I can just smile. And what that did is it almost like brought more positive messages <laughs> to me. And I started to look at life from a different perspective. Another big thing is when someone opened the door, and I, I just don't want to talk about door to door, but it, it, was, it was a big thing of where I learned how to communicate well, was the first thing I would do is I would have a big smile on my face. Hey, how's it going? Right? Not, not, not like a joke, not, not like the joker where it's like, it's creepy. Like, hello, sir, how's it going? No, no, no. I'm talking about a big smile, like a big genuine, like I'm excited to see you. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Um, my name is Daniel. Last thing I want to do is waste any of your time. So I'll keep this really quick. Awesome. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name, right? That is what opened the door to getting to know people a lot more. And I realized naturally what I would do is I would, I would guard myself from bringing people into me and, and my body showed that, my tone of voice showed that, the way I spoke. But as soon as I, and I hated that because I couldn't actually build great relationships with people. So what I would do instead is over time, or what I did instead is when I started to smile, I started to feel good. And people are like a magnet. They don't want to be around people that are annoyed or they're low energy or they're, they're dull or they're complaining. People want to be around other people that feel good, that make them feel good. So one of the best things you could do, if you really want to get your message across, another thing that I also learned because I stuttered when I smiled, I was actually more fluent. I didn't stutter as much. I got my words out better. People, it was the weirdest thing. People started to listen to me more if I smiled. So with that being said, if you want to become a better speaker, you need, you need to smile more. Think of what a charismatic speaker looks like sounds like, right? Even when you're on the phone, you could actually picture if that person's smiling or not. You don't have to see them. When I'm making phone calls, I'm smiling. I don't need to smile. You know, they don't, they don't even see my face, but I'm smiling because it, it shows in my voice. And at the end of the day, a leader is someone who's confident. Smiling and confidence literally go hand in hand. So enthusiasm with the big X. <laughs> You need to smile more. 1,000, 1,000 percent. Now the final part is very vital, is expand your vocabulary. And if I can add, read more. Now you might say, Daniel, what does this have to do with becoming a better speaker? So because I've dealt with stuttering my whole life, I was always, you know, if you stutter, one of the, one of the things that, um, that you understand is you, you'll switch different words. So if I can't say the word um, awesome, I'll say the word great. So you, you become a master at switching words because you know you'll stutter on the word awesome. You might, have, you might say uh, 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 awesome and great is just easier or vice versa. So I became really good at switching words. So I, so I, was, so I didn't stutter or I, I was more fluent. But over time, that only lasts for so long because you hit a point of like, you got to use this word whether you like it or not. So what I would do is to become 
you know, more fluent, but also a better speaker, I had to almost like confront these words. So a word for me was, specifically for me was water. I was in grade seven and I was reading a paragraph in elementary school. And I remember I was reading it and I said, you know, it was like the stream was heavy and the woo, 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 almost like a car that couldn't start. And then I looked up and I, it was, uh, and then I was like, okay, no one noticed. Let me do it again. The stream was heavy and the woo, 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 water. And I looked up and the whole class was laughing. And what that did was it, it embedded this thing of, you can't say the word water. Like you're not good at this word. And I, start, I ran away from that word. And what I had to do was I had to expand my vocabulary, but I had to look at these words. I had to confront these words too that I was scared of and I had to learn them and, and, and become more actually confident with words. It's, it's kind of the weirdest thing ever. So what I would do is I would confront, I would just want to learn as many words as possible. And what I realized when I started to understand, not even the word water, like that's just an example, but I started to like read it and, and see it for what it was. I, I, before I would try to run away from that word. So if you struggle with certain words that you trip on, my advice to you is write those words out and confront them. You wanna practice them. But at the same time, you also wanna expand your vocabulary. Like you wanna be adding to your arsenal of words. Because what that does is it makes you more confident. I want you, I want you to think about it like this. You know, the, the preparation in speaking, you know, initially, you know, it's, it's recording yourself on camera and practicing in the mirror, but it's also reading the words. It's like slowing down your mind and just reading. You're like prepping. You know, if, if you want to be a better speaker, you got to read more. You got to look at these words. You got you to gotta not be scared. When, so when someone says a word, you're not like, I don't even know what that word is. Because every time you hear all these words you don't understand, you get more confused. You get more lost. You, you can't keep up in a conversation. So the final thing is you need to read more. You need to expand your vocabulary. You need to understand that part of becoming a good speaker to, to boost my confidence, to feel good in the conversation is going to come from reading. Is going to come from, okay, so what does this word actually mean? So, you know, I, I took a course and one of the biggest things that they talked about was every time you, when you're reading, every time you hit a word you don't understand, don't continue reading till you, till you define that word, All right? If you're anything like me, I would read a whole um, page and I get to the bottom of the page and I would say, I have no idea what I just read, All right? If, if you're watching this part, I'm sure you can relate to it. You know, it's like, I don't know what I just read from top to bottom, but I'm here now. And the, 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 the reason behind that is because of, there's words on that page you haven't actually defined. You haven't actually understood, so you've kind of skimmed through it to be like, oh, I'll see if I can understand it. You don't want to do that. You want to be able to define words, you want to be able to expand your vocabulary, and what that will do is give you, is give you confidence with um, speaking as a whole, especially when you start to you know, um, be in situations where you're under pressure. So, I'm gonna say it again, the three things, enthusiasm, have that excitement in your voice. Number two is smile, big smile on your face. Uh, and then number three is expand your vocabulary and read more. Um, if you guys wanna learn more about how I actually overcame my stutter and was able to master public speaking and become a, actually a, a good speaker as a whole, there's a free training. Uh, so if you go to masteryourstutter.com, it's, um, it's a 40 minute training. All, all, all you do is you put in your name and your email address and you'll see a training on how I overcame my stutter personally, how I learned it through public speaking, and how I went from someone who was labeled a bad speaker to, to, to really learning how to speak in front of thousands. So if you're interested, go to masteryourstutter.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like below, comment below. I wanna hear what you gotta say and tell me the, your, your favorite tip. So with that being said, I will see you in the next video.